So in this lesson, we're going to cover what concentration of a solution means, how we calculate it in grams per decimeter cubed, and also how we can calculate it in moles per decimeter cubed. Finally, I'm going to introduce you to titrations and how we can find an unknown concentration of solution using titration experiments. The concentration tells us how much of a solid we've dissolved into a solvent. So we have to state the mass of the solid and the volume of the solvent that we've used. For instance, we might have 8 grams of squash in 400 millilitres of water. So what would the concentration be in grams per millimetre? Well, it would be 8 divided by 400, so that gives us 0.02 grams of squash in every millilitre of water, and that would be the concentration. So how many grams would you need to make 700 millilitres of squash of this concentration? Well, if each millilitre needs 0.02 grams of squash and we've got 700 millilitres, then we just times by 700 and that means we need 14 grams of squash. The concentration of the squash was 0.02 grams per millimetre, but we need to be able to state in chemistry concentration in grams per decimetre cubed, which is a volume. So that's given the symbol grams per million divided by decimeter cubed. Or you may see it written like this, grams decimeters to the minus three. Those are both the same units. But how do we convert one to the other? Well, a decimeter cubed is equivalent to one litre, which is a thousand milliliters. So if you want to convert milliliters into decimeters cubed, then you've got to do milliliters divided by a thousand to work out the decimeters cubed, because there are a thousand milliliters in a decimeter cubed. Equally, one centimetre cubed is equal to one milliliter. So to convert from centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed, you've got to again divide by a thousand. So let's have a go at doing some of these calculations ourselves. I'm going to do one for you and I want you to then pause the video and do the others yourself. So we need to work out the concentration of each of these in grams per decimetre cubed. And the first one we have 12 grams of substance is dissolved in 500 millilitres of water, which is 500 centimetres cubed of water. So the concentration will be 12 divided by, and of course it will be 0 0.5, because that will be 500 divided by 1,000, so 12 divided by 0 0.5 is 24. So get a calculator out, pause the video, and have a go at those, and I'll go through them in a minute. So the next one we've got 50 grams divided by 100. Well, 100 millilitres, 100 divided by 1,000 is 0.1. So that gives us 50 divided by 0.1 is 500. The next one you should have got 54. The next one 500 for. And because this is 2 kilograms, which is 2,000 grams, so that's 2,000 divided by 4 is 500. And the final one you should have again got 500 grams per decimeter cubed. So when we only measure concentration in grams per decimeter cubed, we also measure concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. So to convert the number of moles into concentration, we just use the following equation. Moles divided by the volume in decimeter cubed. Now in exam questions, you're normally given the number of moles, and you'd either be given the number of moles, or you'd have to calculate it from the mass dissolved and the molar mass, which we'll come to in a minute. You'll be given the volume, but you'd normally be given it in centimetres cubed in order to check that you understand how to convert it into decimetres cubed. Then, of course, you'd work out the concentration, which would have to be in the unit moles per decimetre cubed. And that's often written as capital M to stand for molar concentration, which is moles per decimetre cubed. So let's do some examples. First of all, calculate the concentration of the following solutions in moles per decimeter cubed. I'll do the first one for you, you do the other two yourself. So we've got 0.1 moles, but it's in centimeters cubed, so I need to divide by 1,000, which is 0.2. So that's 0.1 divided by 0.2, so that's 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. Pause the video and have a go at the other two. So did you get... 2 moles per decimeter cubed and 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed. Now for this one, I want you to use the equation again, 
but calculate the number of moles of each species in the following solutions. Species means the type of compound. So we've got three different compounds here, three different species. Answer the first one, you do the other two yourself. So to calculate the number of moles, that's going to equal concentration times by volume. So in this case, I've got the concentration is 0.2, but that's in moles per decimeter cube, and I, of course, have been given centimeters cube, so I need to divide by 1,000. So that is how many moles I have in that solution. Pause the video, have a go at the other two. So did you get 0.0375 moles? And finally, 0.005 moles. Now, both of those, I quoted the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed or told you the number of moles. This is an example where you have to, first of all, work out the number of moles in your solution, knowing the mass that you've dissolved. So I'll go through this one. I want you to then do one yourself. So we have 23.5 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved into 500 centimeters cubed of water. Calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. The first thing I want to do is to work out how many moles I have of sodium hydroxide. I have 23.5 grams. So the number of moles is the mass divided by the molar mass. So we've got 23.5 divided by, that's the molar mass of sodium, that's the molar mass of oxygen, and that's the molar mass of hydrogen. I've got one atom of each of those. And that gives us the total number of moles as 0.5875 moles. So next, the easier bit, concentration is moles per decimeter cubed, so that's going to be moles divided by decimeter cubed, and that gives us that value there, which of course can also be quoted as 1.175 molar, because that molar solution means moles per decimeter cubed. So next thing, calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 25 centimeters of solution. We're using the equation, the number of moles is the concentration times the volume. We've got the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. We've got to convert this from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed by dividing by 1,000. And that is how many moles we have in that solution. Pause the video. You will need your periodic table, which you can get from the back of your revision guide for combined science or the back of your revision guide for triple chemistry. Once you've got that, work out these, and then I'll go through them in a minute. So to calculate the concentration, first of all, I'm changing the volume from litres into decimeters cubed. And a bit of a trick here, a litre is a thousand centimetres cubed, which is a decimeter cubed. We've then got the molar mass of magnesium chloride. It's 24 plus 2 for the chlorine gives us 95 grams. So therefore, the number of moles is the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 45.7 divided by 95, and that gives us 0.481 moles. So finally, the concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume, and you should have got 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed, or 0.2 molar solution. The next bit, the number of moles in this amount of solution is just the concentration times the volume. So you've got the concentration, you've converted the volume to decimals cubed, and you should have got 0.06 moles. If you've got that right, well done. So let's now have a look at how we use titrations to find the concentration of unknown solution. If you're watching this video for combined science GCSE, you can stop the video now. You don't have to know this bit. If you're watching it as a triple science student, or AQA, you do need to know about titration concentrations. And if you're watching it as an applied science BTEC level three student, you need to know this as well. So here we've got a standard solution. A standard solution is a known concentration calculated very accurately or made up very accurately. And this is of sulfuric acid, and the concentration is two molar, which means two moles per decimeter cubed. And we're going to put exact value of 20 centimeters cubed into it by using the graduated pipette. We're then going to add an unknown concentration of an alkali, sodium hydroxide, and we can use a burette to do that. So first of all, you want to know the volume 
of the sodium hydroxide we're going to add to sulfuric acid to neutralize it. So we put an indicator in here or use a pH probe. And we first of all measure the initial volume reading here on the scale of purette. We then add enough sodium hydroxide, alkali, until our indicator shows us that it's gone neutral or we could have used a pH probe. And that will give us the final volume. And so we take the initial volume away from the final volume and we get the volume of sodium hydroxide, which in this case could be 25 centimeters cubed or 25 milliliters. So how can we now use these results to work out the unknown concentration of our sodium hydroxide? Well, just to remind you, we added 25 centimeters cubed volume of sodium hydroxide, which we didn't know the concentration of, to completely neutralize the reaction with 20 centimeters of two molar sulfuric acid. So first thing is we need to produce a balanced equation for the reaction, which I've given you here. So this shows you one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide to neutralize it. So the next step is we can add this to a table. Now in your exam, you won't have this table in front of you, but the table helps to work out the process and then I'll show you how to do it without the table. So what I've got here is the compound and we had sulfuric acid and we've also got sodium hydroxide. The next thing I'm going to call down is the ratios of the reactants. So we've got one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide from our balanced equation. I'm then going to add the volumes of both that we've done. We knew the volume of that, 20 centimeters cubed, and then we measured the volume of the sodium hydroxide to neutralize that 20 centimeters cubed. The next thing I'm going to put in is the other thing we know, which is the concentration of the sulfuric acid, which was two molar solution. So now that I've put all the things I know in, I've now got to work out these values in order to work out my final goal, which is the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So the first thing I want to do is to convert the volumes from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed by divided by a thousand. The next thing I need to do is to work out the number of moles of sulfuric acid that I had. And remember from this equation here, the number of moles is concentration times volume. So for this one here, I had a concentration of two and the volume was 0.002 decimeters cubed. So I've got the total number of moles of sulfuric acid I've used is 0.004. So now the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is double the amount of sulfuric acid. So that automatically gives us twice that, which is 0.008 moles which allows me now to work out the unknown concentration of sodium hydroxide because, of course, concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume. I have the number of moles and I have the volume. So that gives me the number of moles divided by the volume, 3.2 moles per decimeter cubed or 3.2 molar solution. Sometimes they don't want the answer in moles per decimeter cubed. They want the answer in grams per decimeter cubed. So all we have to do is to work out what is the mass of 3.2 moles and we can substitute that in. So remember mass is the number of moles times the molar mass and the molar mass for sodium hydroxide is 23 plus 16 plus 1 which is 40 grams. So if we've got 3.2 moles then of course the mass will be 3.2 times the molar mass, which is 40, which is 128 grams, we will dissolve in a decimeter cube. So what you want to do now is to have a practice at this one yourself. Read through this section here. I've filled in the bits we already know, so then have a go at filling the rest in to find the concentration of hydrochloric acid. So again, the first thing is we need to convert the volumes into decimeters cubed from centimeters cubed. The next thing is I need to work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that I've actually used. And that, of course, is going to be the concentration times the volume. So that is just 0.013. This is a ratio of one to one. So we'll get exactly the same number of moles of hydrochloric acid. And finally, concentration is the number of moles 
divided by the volume, and that gives us 0.65. So if you got that, well done. Finally, we're also asked about the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed. So the molar mass of hydrochloric acid is just the molar mass of chlorine, 35.5 plus 1 for hydrogen. So that gives us 36.5. So, of course, grams is the molar mass times the number of moles. So that gives us 23.725 grams per decimeter cubed. Now, of course, in your exam, you won't have time to set a table up like this, and you don't actually need the table in order to answer the questions. So before you go away and practice your own questions, I'm just going to show you a different way of doing it without the table. So what we have is 25.5 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide solution reacts with 25 centimetres cubed of 0.1 mole per decimetre cubed of hydrochloric acid. So we know the concentration of hydrochloric acid and we know its volume. So we're trying to find out the concentration of sodium hydroxide in this neutralisation reaction. And you can see there's a ratio of 1 to 1 between them. So it asks, first of all, to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide solution and give an answer to three significant figures. We're then asked to convert it from moles per decimeter cube to grams per decimeter cube, again, to three significant figures. So let's start, first of all, by reminding ourselves we need to know the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that we've used. So that's our starting point. So the number of moles of hydrochloric acid is the concentration times the volume. That's the concentration. We've converted the volume from centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed by dividing by 1,000. So that's the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Of course, it's a ratio of 1 to 1. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which is the unknown solution, is going to be exactly the same. So now we can work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide, just moles divided by volume. That's the moles. The volume is 22.5 divided by 1,000 to convert it into decimeters cubed. Gives you a molarity of 0.111. Lastly, we're going to convert that from moles per centimeter cubed to grams per decimeter cubed by just multiplying by the molar mass, which is 40 for sodium hydroxide. And that's it done. What you need to now do is go away and do lots of practice questions on this so you remember the technique and start to feel confident with it.